In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a jungle terrarium that has two flowing waterfalls. I'm going to start by building the glass tank. To buy a small custom made glass tank like this, it will usually set you back a decent amount of money. I'm going to show you a low budget, easy way to make it yourself. I got these frameless picture frames for a few pounds each. They're a great way to get hold of some low cost glass. The glass from these is two millimeters. Try to avoid going any thinner. To cut the glass, you'll need a glass cutter, a ruler and a sharpie. I start by taking the ruler and marking out the length I want to cut. Make sure you do this at both ends. Then I take some tape, attach it to the ruler, line the ruler up and attach it onto the glass. The tape will help keep the ruler in place and stop it from moving about whilst you're cutting the glass. Next I take the glass cutter and do one continuous score on the glass. Then it's as easy as pulling the ruler off, taking the glass to a straight edge and giving it a few gentle taps. You should be left with a straight clean break. It may seem complicated at first but it's definitely not as hard as you might think. Just get a few cheap frames and start practicing. You're bound to mess up here and there but you'll be surprised at how easy it is. Once I've cut out all the pieces, I like to use some electrical tape to do a test fit. I do this before sanding the glass down just to make sure everything's the right size. Keep in mind that the glass is very sharp at this point, so handle it with care. Everything fit together perfectly, so it's time to sand down the sharp edges. One bonus of using glass from picture frames is that most of the edges are actually already smooth, so you haven't got to do that much sanding. Only the edges that you cut will need to be sanded down. When sanding glass, make sure that the sandpaper and glass is wet. This will eliminate glass dust, which is something you definitely don't want to be breathing in. Once all the pieces were sanded and dried, I placed on a few bits of electrical tape. This will hold the pieces together whilst the silicone dries. With that done, it's now time for the silicone. As you can see, the opening for the silicone to come out is quite large. I'm going to use some tape to make it a little bit narrower. This will help create a thinner bead of silicone, which is ideal for the tank size I'm building. Now I'm going to start placing the silicone on the glass. At this point, it's important to work fast, but doing your best not to rush. Typically, you've got about 10 to 15 minutes before the silicone starts to cure. I should mention that you should only use 100% silicone or silicone that's advertised as aquarium or fish safe. I'm carefully placing each piece in its correct location and gently pressing it down into place. At this point, I'm constantly checking if everything's square and in line. With most of the pieces in and the tape secured, I go on to add another bead of silicone along the inside. I'm then going to use my finger to smoothen out the silicone and remove the excess. Adding the secondary bead of silicone helps ensure that the tank is watertight and it won't leak. I then attach the front panel and the top panel and leave the tank to dry for 24 hours. 24 hours later and the silicone has fully cured. Now I'm going to remove the electrical tape and start to clean up any imperfections. This is easily done with a sharp blade. It can be quite tempting to try and remove the imperfections whilst the silicone is still wet. But I speak from experience that it's much easier to wait till it's fully dried and then removing it. Here's how it looks after being cleaned up. It's definitely not the neatest, but I'm still happy with it. Now I'm going to move on to the drainage layer. For this, I'm going to be using this black filter foam. It's very lightweight and will have the added benefit of filtering the water as it gets pulled into the pump. I cut a piece the size off camera and placed it inside the tank. Before continuing, I need to make sure that the tank holds water and it doesn't have any leaks. I'm going to fill the bottom section of the tank up and leave it for a few hours. I very rarely have a leaking tank, but it's always good to test. A good few hours have passed and the tank is all good, so it's time to move on. Now let's start talking about the scape I want to create. I want to create a large waterfall that flows down from the left and another smaller one on the right side. To make these, I'm primarily going to be using some expanding foam. I'm going to start by lining the inside of the tank with some cling film. This will serve as a barrier between the expanding foam and the glass. This will mean I can easily remove it once it's dried. After giving the bottle a good shake, I started to apply it inside the tank. I created a larger section on the left and a slightly smaller one on the right, and they both joined up in the middle. I then left it to dry for about 24 hours. 24 hours later, and as you can see, it's expanded quite a lot. At this point, it's fully dried, so I'm going to try and remove it from the tank. This wasn't too hard at all, and it did come out relatively easily. I can then remove the cling film, which made it much easier to get in and out of the tank. 
After placing it back inside, I can really start to see the vision I had for this build, with the large waterfall flowing down on the left and the smaller one on the right. Before I start carving the foam, I'm going to take a sharpie and start marking out some of the paths that I want the water to flow down. I'm really glad I did this as it gave me a great idea of how I want the water to flow down the scape. Next I started carving the foam. I started off by primarily focusing on the areas I want the water to flow down. These areas will need to be slightly deeper and will help determine the flow of the water. I did the majority of the carving by hand as it was very easy to just pull the foam out with my fingers. As you can see it's really starting to take shape. Now that all the foam has been carved I want to add a few pieces of lava rock throughout the waterfall. I'm adding these to add a little more depth and interest in certain areas. I placed in a few more and here's how it's looking. It doesn't exactly look too natural at the moment, but by the end you won't even be able to tell between the rocks and the foam. At the moment they're just wedged in place, so I'm going to secure them with the super glue and tissue method. All I do is wedge some tissue between the rock and the foam and soak it in super glue. It dries quickly and forms a strong bond which is 100% plant safe. With all the rocks in place and all the foam fully carved, it's time to move on. I'm using a long stick to poke through some holes which will serve as the outlet of the waterfalls. Now I'm going to use a sharp blade to trim off the back edges so the tubing of the pump can fit through. I'm just doing this very rough at the moment and I'll do it properly and in more detail once we get the pump in. Now I'm going to start covering up all the exposed foam. I'm going to do this using this crushed black lava rock. I'll attach it to the background with the same silicone I used to build the tank. As I explained at the start, make sure you're using the proper type of silicone. I cover a small patch in silicone and then use my finger to spread it out and get it in all the gaps and cracks. Then I'm taking the lava rock and pouring it on top. After pouring on a generous amount, I press it down into the silicone. This will help ensure it gets stuck in place. I then pour off the excess lava rock and here's how it looks. As you can see, there's a few gaps that I missed, but these can be easily covered as I go. I continue the same process and work in small chunks at a time. If you're too ambitious and place on too much silicone, it can start to dry before you get the lava rock on, which is definitely not what you want. Even with just half of it done, it's really starting to look how I wanted. Here's how it looks after I finished covering all the foam in black lava rock and left it to dry for 24 hours. As you can probably see, there's a few patches that I missed, which I'm going to show you now how to easily cover up. I'm simply going to take some super glue and place a small amount on the exposed foam. I can then take some more crushed black lava rock and sprinkle it on top. I then remove the excess and as you can see, it covers it up really well. It also dries very quickly, so I haven't got to wait another 24 hours if I decided to cover it up using silicone. With the background pretty much done, I'm going to place it inside the tank to get a general idea of how it's going to look. It's really starting to come together and it's looking just how I hoped it would. Now it's time to move on and start installing the pump. I'm using this small USB brushless water pump. I did add a small 90 degree angle on the intake to ensure that it works in low water. In the end this wasn't actually necessary but I did it just in case. I then took a sharp blade and cut out a section of the foam for the pump to sit in. I also made sure to cut out a section for the intake to sit into. The pump fits in nicely so now it's time to move on to the outlet. To get the water from the pump up to the waterfalls I'm using this 10mm tubing. I've already roughly cut them to size and joined two pieces together that would lead to both waterfalls. The tubing fits over the outlet of the pump perfectly. Now I'm once again going to take a sharp blade and start cutting away at the back of the background. I carved out a rough path which the tubes can fit into whilst the background can still sit flush with the glass. Now I need to attach some more tubing which will lead to the output of the waterfalls. To do this I took a sharp blade and carved out a hole in the tube. The smaller piece can then fit into the hole and be glued into place. I did cut out a small notch into the tube which will allow for a better flow of water. Then I'm simply going to use some super glue to glue them in place. Here's how they look after being glued into place and they're very solid and won't be going anywhere. Before installing the pump I want to add some spiderwood to the hardscape to add a little contrast and some interest. I only wanted to place a few branches so I took some time to find the best location for each piece. Once I did, I secured it in place with the super glue and tissue method. Here's how it looks with all the spiderwood in place. I'm very happy with how it's looking, but the exposed glue needs to be covered up. This was easily done with more super glue and crushed lava rock. I'm also going to take a sharpie and cover up all the foam on the edges. 
As you can see, it's visible in the side reflection and definitely doesn't look very natural. Once the ink's dry, it's inert, which means it's completely safe to use. If you're enjoying this build, drop it a like and why not consider subscribing so you don't miss any future builds. Now when placing it inside the tank, you can see that that yellow foam reflection is gone. Although I probably should have done this at the start, I'm going to take a small section of foam and cut it to size that will sit on the bottom of the tank. This will protect the glass from any uneven surfaces that the tank sits on. I'm using a black sharpie to cover the front and sides so the blue doesn't stand out. I then took some double sided tape and stuck it to the bottom of the tank. Now it's finally time to put the background, pump and tubing together and give it a test run. I filled the bottom up with water until the intake was fully submerged and then plugged in the USB cable. Both halves of the waterfall worked great, but a little more powerful than I expected. I'll show you how I went about fixing that later on. With the test run complete and successful, I'm going to assemble the tank for the final time. The USB cable for the pump runs at the back of the tank and fits through a small hole at the top. I completely forgot to mention, but I did cover up the holes on the top of the tubing on either side of the waterfall. With everything in place, it's now finally time to get in the substrate. I'm going to use Aquasoil as it's got no problem being wet and having water running through it. My regular terrarium substrate would not be suitable for this build. I pour in a generous amount and then gently spread it out with my fingers. To add some more interest and a better transition up to the background, I'm going to add a few pieces of lava rock to the bottom of the scape. I didn't go too overboard and only added a few bits. Now I'm going to start bringing this terrarium to life with plants. This is Trident Leaf Java Fern. I'm going to wedge it in behind the background. I think it will look really good in the back and make it look as if there's a dense jungle growing behind the waterfalls. I used some long tweezers to wedge it down into place. In case you didn't know, this plant is an epithyte and should not be planted into substrate. It's starting to look great already, but there's plenty more plants to come. This is a large species of Anubius that has some beautiful deep ridged leaves. I really think it will help bring a jungle feel into this waterfall terrarium. After removing the rock wall, I experimented with a few different locations before deciding where to place it. I removed some of the trident fern and placed it in the center of the background. I made sure to keep the plants nice and damp by giving them a good spray every now and then. Next, I'm gonna plant this Anubius throughout the tank as well. This Anubius has got some beautiful arrow shaped leaves and I think it will look great growing at the bottom of the tank. As this plant is an epithyte, I made sure not to plant the rhizome into the substrate. I used some super glue to mount the larger section to a rock and then placed it at the base of the tank. This is perfectly safe to do, just try not to use too much super glue. I've got a few bits of Booster Philandra which I'm going to place throughout the waterfalls. These will grow really well in the flow of water. I've also got a few smaller pieces which will help bring a little more detail and interest throughout the terrarium. Here's how it looks with most of the parts in. I'm really happy with how it's coming together. I love how the base of the tank is looking and really think it's going to look like a true jungle terrarium. One thing I don't like is being able to see the outlets of the waterfalls. I'm going to use a small piece of black lava rock and some super glue to make it a little more secluded. This terrarium would definitely not be complete without some moss. For this build, I'm going to be using java moss. Like all the other plants in here, it's an aquatic species which will have no trouble growing inside this setup. I tore off small chunks and placed them throughout the terrarium. The constant flow of water will keep the moss damp and saturated, promoting new growth. I'm hoping it will slowly grow and spread over the lava rock. I'm tearing off small chunks and placing them at the bottom of the tank. It will have no trouble growing at the base of the tank and will bring some colour to the black lava rock and substrate. I'm loving how the terrarium's looking with all the moss and plants in, but it's not done yet. Before moving on, I'm going to give all the moss and plants a good spray down to ensure they're not drying out. Now I'm going to introduce some life. As you may already know, these are springtails. They will help keep the terrarium clean by eating mold and decaying matter. Their population will self-regulate depending on available food, so you've never got to worry about them overpopulating the tank. You can get a good sense of just how small they are on this Anubius leaf. Now it's time to fill up the base of the terrarium with water. I did this very slowly to try not to disturb the plants and moss in the bottom of the scape. It doesn't need to be filled to the top, just make sure the intake of the pump is fully submerged. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch on the pump. Similar to the test run earlier, the output on the left was a little too strong. This was a simple and easy fix by placing a tiny bit of filter foam just in front of the output. This helped the water flow down instead of being pushed straight out. 
The waterfall's flow was perfect and I loved how it looked going through the moss and plants. Of course this terrarium needs a front panel to trap the humidity inside. This was easily done with a piece of glass that's held on with some tape that acts as a hinge. I then left the terrarium to grow for four weeks. Four weeks later and the jungle waterfall terrarium is thriving. I'm going to take the front panel off to get a better look inside. Both waterfalls are still flowing perfectly and all the moss and plants inside have been growing great. The moss is growing just how I hoped it would and the plants have been filling out nicely which is helping to bring out that jungle look I was going for. Do you think there's anything else I can do to make it look even more like a jungle? I was thinking of maybe adding some twisted vines. Let me know in the comments below. A couple weeks in, the spiderwood did go for a slight mould phase, which was completely expected. Fast forward to today and it's pretty much all cleaned up thanks to the springtails. Most of the plants have got some new growth as can be seen in this stunning Anubius leaf. The Anubius and Bucephalandra planted on the waterfall have shot out these new roots which I think help add to the detail of the scape. All the moss growing at the base and throughout the waterfalls has been growing really well and is in need of a trim sometime soon. Overall, I'm extremely happy with how this waterfall terrarium turned out. Please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this build and want to see more like it. Thanks for watching and why not check out this video as I think you might enjoy it too.